when it comes to TVs, brands like Samsung, Sony, LG, TCL, Hisense and Panasonic have long been contenders for the best TV manufacturers and are considered as tier 1 brands. And today I've got the new Panasonic 4K TV with me. The company sells its premium 4K televisions here in the Asian market as well and it recently introduced two TVs under the HX750 series here in Nepal. Today we're going over the 55 inch variant and I will also be comparing it with the cheaper Mi TV 4X and the similarly priced Samsung's AU7700 so we will have a better understanding of how more expensive TVs from Panasonic and Samsung compare against the cheaper alternatives. Okay, let's begin this review with the design. Here, uh, Panasonic and Samsung's TVs offer a premium look with minimalistic bezels on the front. However, the Mi TV 4X has exactly the kind of visual aesthetics that we're used to seeing in the non-premium segment. It hosts quite wide bezels on all four sides compared to the other two TVs, although I must say that it does not look that bad. All of them have a wide V-shaped leg stand, but the major difference here is the Mi TV 4X and the Samsung AU7700 incorporate plastic feet, while Panasonic ships the HX750 with a metal stand. You can choose to wall mount these TVs too, yet neither of the three includes a mounting bracket inside the box. Alright, now moving on to the connectivity side of things, all of them come with a healthy selection of input and output ports. This includes three HDMI's, um, including one with ARC support, one digital audio out, one AV in, one Ethernet connection, and up to two USB 2.0 Type-A ports. Okay, now coming to the display, all three TVs here have the same screen size, which is 55 inches, and they are all 4K sets with HDR support. Now, talking about the panel quality, the cheaper Mi TV 4X comes with some obvious caveats. It fails to manage deep plaques, whereas the Panasonic HX750 and Samsung's AU7700 achieve a considerably deeper black level, thereby delivering greater extent of details under fairly dim content. When comparing the Mi TV 4X to the Panasonic HX750, the clarity and color accuracy were clearly superior on the latter. In any instance, uh, contents come off with a slight reddish hue on the Mi TV 4X, making the picture quality appear unnatural. Also, the viewing angle is like something out of a nightmare with the Mi TV 4X. It's obviously not that bad when you're sitting right in front of the TV, but someone sitting on the side or not in the direct line of sight will notice the drop in color and saturation levels right away. Having said that, I did find the Panasonic HX750 lack in one area, which is backlight bleeding. It has noticeable backlight bleeding in almost all the edges of the display, especially the bottom right. But I guess it should not bother a lot until and unless you always watch content in a comparatively dark room or uh, one with a big letterbox on top and the bottom. Okay, now comparing the Panasonic and Samsung TV side by side, as you can see, Samsung has a well-defined contrast level, which makes the content appear more true to life. Also, its panel is somewhat warm by default, whereas Panasonic's LED panel leans on the cooler side, resulting in a little bluish tinge. We've played a variety of videos on both TVs and found that the Panasonic HX750 goes an extra mile in terms of sharpness and saturation. On the contrary, Samsung's AU7700 looks comparatively undersaturated. Another thing that drew my attention was the fact that the AU7700 can't seem to produce red reds and things tend to look rather orangish here. For example, in the Awaken Akira video, you can see how it adjusts red levels to orange. Uh, from the crashing building to the title card, the video looks quite unappealing on the AU7700. We even tried switching between multiple picture modes or custom setting different display parameters, but to no avail. Anyway, after the display, the next major thing to look out for in any television is the audio. Here, all three of these feature a dual bottom firing speaker setup with 20 watt of output. Despite this, they do differ in terms of their audio decoder technology. While the Samsung AU7700 incorporates Dolby Digital Plus, the Panasonic HX750 opts for Dolby Atmos and DTS Studio Sound. On the other hand, the Mi TV 4X features Dolby Audio and DTS HD audio decoding. 
Okay, quality wise, the Mi TV 4X falls short in the base sector, but it is loud enough to fill an average size living room. Now, pitting the two premium ones against each other, Samsung's AU7700 easily clinches the crown here with its deep and detailed sound profile, where one can even pick out the more subtle details. Also, the HX750's audio begins to distort when raising the volume above 50 to 60%, while the AU7700 does not distort even at its loudest. Alright, now let's get into the software side of things. Samsung's AU7700 runs on the company's in-house Tizen OS for TV, whereas the Panasonic HX750 and the Mi TV 4X are Android smart TVs. Starting with the Android TVs, they have a top-to-down scrollable interface with row-based menus. You also get content recommendations based on your web activity here. Also, because these are Android TVs, the UI feels quite familiar as well. Uh, moreover, the entire UI and UX feels snappier on the Panasonic HX750. Now, coming to Samsung's Tizen OS, it's a Linux-based operating system with a completely different interface than Android TVs. It has a floating menu that does not take up the entire screen, ultimately delivering a clean visual layout. However, everything from opening apps to browsing through the UI is not that smooth on the AU7700, which may be because of the last-gen Crystal Processor 4K. Apart from this, Android TV also has Chromecast built in for seamless screencasting between your Android devices, while the Tizen OS misses out on this thing. However, it does make up for this omission with the AirPlay 2 support. With this, you can cast your Apple devices like iPhone, iPad, MacBook and such to the TV. One thing I would quickly like to add here is that the Panasonic HX750 and Samsung's AU7700 boots up in an average of just 2 seconds, whereas the Mi TV 4X takes nearly 40 seconds. So the slow and steady does not always win the race, I guess. Okay, when it comes to the remote, the silicon rubber keys on the Mi TV 4X feel stiff and need a firm push. On the other hand, Panasonic HX750's big remote provides soft and subtle feedback. Interestingly, Samsung has gone with recyclable materials for its entire 2021 lineup of TV remotes. Um, while this remote does not feel nearly as premium as the one on 2020's TU800 series, we had no trouble operating it. So like the audio, Samsung takes the lead in this department as well. Its Bixby voice assistant can make web searches, launch apps, or change TV settings without a hiccup. And the Indian unit of the AU7700 also supports Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa voice input. To compare, Google Assistant on the Panasonic HX750 and the Mi TV 4X is not capable of meddling with system settings. Okay, wrapping it up, the Panasonic TH55HX750 is definitely a good 55 inches 4K TV in terms of its picture quality, its viewing angles, and snappy user interface. I will say that the Mi TV 4X is a decent competition, but apart from its affordability, there's not much going for it. But comparing it against Samsung's latest AU7700, there are some areas where you would find the HX750 to be inferior like its backlight bleeding and audio quality. Having said that, the price difference between the two is quite significant, especially in the Asian market. What all this translates to is that the Panasonic HX750 is a great value for money TV, although depending on the market, you could find better alternatives for a slightly higher price. So that was all for this Panasonic TV review. Uh, we will be coming up with a lot of consumer electronics uh, devices review as well. So for that, you would want to stay tuned to our channel by subscribing and hitting that bell icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.